welcome to the needle bug my friends my name is karen and if you are new here welcome i am so glad that you clicked on the channel and are going to give it a try i hope you find something that you like and that you'll stick around for a while if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me every time i do a video you guys are all great and to my VIP members, well, what can I say, you guys? From the bottom of my heart, I thank each and every one of you for sticking with me and putting up with my craziness. <laughs> so, this is a channel about needlework, and it is the place where I share my knowledge of stitching and that mainly cross stitch and hard hanger and a little bit of whatever comes along thrown in so hope you find something that you like and that you'll hang around for a while so what have we been up to well gee we have a little bit to catch up on because it's been a little bit of a while since i did a video kind of felt like i needed just a little bit of a break so Plus, things were a little busy. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. But let's first look at what I've been stitching. I haven't gotten a lot of stitching done, but we did get some. So let's look at what we've been stitching. In no particular order, and I know you folks really want to see this first one on my pile because this is... Okay, I lovingly call him. Red. It is Sir Frederick Frosty. It is a stocking by Heaven and Earth Designs, and it will be for my daughter. So that's how far we are on Fred. I really just have the foot to do. I'm 70% finished. I did most of my work. Let me get a little closer. Whoa. I always go the wrong way. Okay, here. Did most of my work over in here. So now I just have the foot over in here to do yet. And then he will be finished. So it's going to come out to here and come down and around. But the foot is, let me try that. Maybe you can see a little bit better. It is what we have to do. So that's Fred. I have till November to get Fred finished. And then next year, it will be my son-in-law's stocking, which will be uh, Heaven and Earth Designs Snowman. So I don't have but oh, maybe less than 100 stitches in that one. So that one will be next, next year. Then next up, what I worked on was and God shed his grace. Do you know what? Let me put him in the overhead. Let's put him up here and you can see a little bit better. There you go. So this is and God shed his grace. It's on 20 count Ada. I'm stitching it one over one. So that's one strand of floss over one block in the fabric. Okay, it's full cross. It's not, I'm not a fan, I'm not a, a lover of 10 stitch as much as I'd like to be. I really do like my full cross the best. So it's full cross and as you can see, in fact, when I was getting this together today, this was the first the first I noticed, can you believe that? The first time I noticed, and I'm the one stitching it, that the fence is starting to come in a little bit. Is that not cool? Is that not cool? I, um, I can't tell you exactly how I'm stitching it at the moment. I started out on the diagonal. I did a bit of cross country. I went back to the diagonal, stitching the rows vertically, 
And now I think I'm just kind of following a color. Well, what I'd like to do, I'm really working right in here at the moment. And I think what I'd like to do is run this up to the top. I'm not sure. I could change my mind again, guys. You know me. But I'm kind of thinking I want to kind of sort of feather columns and work totally from the right-hand side to the left. Because that way, um, I can roll this fabric up and not have it be stitched fabric. So we'll see. And you know what? I sit here and I say that. But you all know, those of you that have been around a while, all know that this too is going to change multiple times until this is finished. <laughs> it will change more times than any of us can count. So that is and God shed his grace. This one I have really enjoyed working on. And I, it's, it's kind of um, picking up Fred's time. And the last one that I have worked on is the Hardanger sampler. Let me see if I can maybe get this let me see if I can make this window a little bit better. Oh, no. No, it's just going to make it bigger. Okay, there we go. So this is the Hardanger Sampler. Um, here, let's see if I can zoom, zoom, zoom a little bit. There you go. Give it a little bit more focus. Oops, 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 oops. Okay, you, I'll, I'll bear with my little... Um, messing with the camera. <laughs> Is that nothing new? Okay, let's see. Ooh, going the wrong way here, guys. Gotta go the other way. There we go. There, there we go. Okay, how's that? How's that? Okay, so this was block one. That's completely done. Block two is completely done. Block three is completely done. Four is finished. Five is finished. Six is finished. Let me go back over here to seven. That's all done. Eight is all done. Eight called for um, dove's eyes in these openings, and I am not going to put them in. Uh, then we have nine is all done. Ten also all finished. Again, that called for dove's eyes, and I'm not going to put those in. Eleven. Oh, hold it, sorry. Let me get something darker underneath here. And you can see it a little, little bit better. There we go. Okay. Oh, no, wait, I turned the wrong one. There we go. There you go. So let's go back. Let's go back. There's number one. Okay. Number two. Those little dove size. When you do them in the cluster blocks. Ooh. A little finicky. Number three. All done. Number four. All done. 
five all done and six all done i'm almost done with this seven all done eight i'm not putting dub size in there nine All done. 10. All done. I'm not putting dub size in there. 11. I changed this from the pattern. Um, I forget what the pattern had, but I put a different filling stitch in here. It's very similar. It's what it is, is this filling stitch only just one quarter of it okay. so that's what I put in that one this next one again I changed the filling stitches I'm not going to put dove size in here and this I put lazy daisy stitches in the center at the, at the intersection so that was um, some creative license because remember guys patterns are just really a guide you can change whatever you want so it's just a guide okay, so here is the last row and again I changed the filling because there was none that was just plain this one I also changed, and this center part has picots in it. And again, I don't remember exactly what was supposed to be there, but I put picots in it instead. And I just have this last block to finish. So I just have the four corners to do. Cut the openings, and I'm undecided if I'm going to put dove size in there or not it's still up for debate until i get there and the reason i changed some of these is because i am going to make this into a little clutch so let me zoom you out a little bit so that we can we can look at this a little bit better whoops too far there we go so my plan is that this half or these four rows are going to be the body Let's see if we can come this way there we go okay these four rows two and four are going to be the body of the clutch or little pocket or whatever you want to call it and then this row where I really altered is going to be the flap. Okay. All right. So I have to, um, after I finish this block, put it together. I'm not a seamstress and I am not the world's best finisher either. But what I thought I would do is with right sides together, so aligning, well, yes, so aligning fabric in. And that would be, this is kind of in my head what I'm thinking. So anybody out there that has any suggestions on how to better do this, please, please let me know. But my thought was to sew on the lining fabric, like put, have the right sides together, put my lining fabric on top, sew around the whole edge, leaving an opening to turn. 
okay? That way I have finished edges on every side, okay? And then wherever that opening is, after I have it turned and all the corners out, all nice and pretty, stitch that shut. Then I can make my flap. I can do my folding like I would trim before I turned it. I would trim this excess stuff off so it turns nice. Then I would fold this up like this. And I would have to then sew this together. Now, that is what I'm thinking about and I think right along the stitching of the four-sided stitch I may because this will now be finished with the way I lined it this will all be finished with the way I lined it I may just take my sewing machine and stitch a line of st stitching with the machine through the middle of this four-sided stitch and that would hold it together that is my thought so if anyone has a better way <laughs> to do this I am certainly open to any kind of instruction or how to do it better but that is my thought on how to do it. Really, I don't know that it's going to get used all that much, but it really is probably going to be more um, just for pretty. <laughs> but that's my plan because this is already going to be finished if I you know, put that piece of material on, sew it on all the way around except for the opening, flip it, flip the right sides back out then all I really have to do is join these two sides to make it into and then some kind of a closure and depending on how I place that I could put a little button here and a little button here and have a little string that's attached and you know how you do do those manila envelopes, <laughs> those inner office memo envelopes? I could close it just like that. Any, like I said, any thoughts are I am more than receptive <laughs> to hearing any suggestions for if there's a better way for me to do it. But in my head, that's kind of what I have planned. So, I forgot to add that video. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let me grab it quick. I have a video. I have a video of everybody else's hardanger. So, let me see if I can get it for you quickly. Ah, local file, okay. Hold on, let me remember where it is. I'm sure you can't see, I would hope you can't see it. Six, 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 five, Jeez Louise. Here it is. Okay. Let me Okay. It should be playing.
Now these are the people that sent me pictures of their progress. Isn't Ariadna's gorgeous with the green and the... It's not pink, it's like a fleshy color. Oh, it's beautiful. I like the color combination she used. And I'm sorry, I apologize for some of these pictures. I don't know why they got so grainy. So if you would like your picture included um i will as people send me videos i will um keep making a new one to update anybody to update people that have completed or are still working on their their stitch along samplers so feel free send them my email is always in the drop down box and feel free to send them anytime Okay, what's next? Ah, people have asked me if you guys remember from a previous video, I had ordered from my bobbin a clamp for my nerd stand. And I have to say, the jury is still out. Now, I can show you how it goes on. Okay, it is a clamp. Here we go. It is a clamp. Goes on like this. Okay, and you can put a Q-snap in it. And then it falls down. <laughs> okay, it has the okay, it has the little ridges in it that should prevent your Q snap from slipping. However, that is still why the jury is out. It holds a hoop just fine, just fine. However, my Q snap still and it's it could be user <laughs> malfunction <laughs> but my q-snap doesn't always want to stay in place so i'm trying to play around with it and i haven't had a lot of time to do that here of late but i'm trying to play around with it to my thought is that the plant of your Q-snap should end up in the groove. And that is what's going to keep it from slipping out. So I just have to play around a bit to find out the best way to do that, to have that happen. But this is what it looks like. I got it from my bobbin in Russia and I did just I need to tighten that so it quits falling over. <laughs> I did just get a, a note from someone who said they can't find them on the website. My guess is, because I had tried before to get some, and they were not on the website. So my guess is they are out of stock. And to just keep checking back, because when they're in stock again, they will show up on the website that's what happened um i probably had a little bit to do with that 
because when I ordered, I ordered four. I got two for me and two for my friend Barb. So I have one on my sit upon stand and I have one on my, um, well, it's a table stand, but you can also use it as a floor stand because of the height that you can put it up to. So I probably caused them to be out of stock. <laughs> Plus I had told a lot of people about them. Well, I had mentioned on here about them. So I'm sure, I'm pretty sure quite a few of you uh, tried to order. So just keep checking back with them. And as soon as they're in stock again, I am sure that they'll be on the website again. If they sold like hotcakes the last time they're going to sell. <laughs> they're certainly going to reorder them to sell more. So that's the Nerge clamp. Uh, yeah, the, the clamp for the Nerge. And that is the only place that I have found that you are able to get those. I have a hunch that maybe somehow they have some kind of deal with Nerge that they, I, I don't know. I don't know, but that's the only place that I have been, that I've even found. I have searched the internet and ha couldn't find anything even close to that. So just keep checking. Just keep checking. And it's mybobbin.com. Now, this could make this video a little bit long. <laughs> My next topic is, I was away over the weekend to Nazareth, Pennsylvania, to a Hampton Inn in Nazareth for a wonderful, wonderful, awesome stitching retreat. And let me tell you what, I had no fun at all. <laughs> Believe that and I will tell you another one. <laughs> it was a blast. It was so much fun. So much fun to the fact that typical Karen, Got very little stitching done. Very little. Maybe at best between two projects, because I switched off, maybe at best 200 stitches between the two of them. Because, yeah, just chatting and chatting and chatting, which Gee, I seem to recollect that's exactly why you go to these retreats. It's so that you can meet up with people. I think that is the plan. So, I am so happy to say I met up with um, some friends that I have been stitching with for 10 years or more at Salty Yarns and they were there and it was such a wonderful thing to see those two ladies. I miss stitching with them and they are, they're just awesome people. I love them to death. Um, yeah. So Barb and Sue, thanks for showing up. It was just so much fun. We enjoyed every, every minute. My friend, my friend Barb, well, both Barbs are my friend, but my, my Barb, who lives close to me, is always my chauffeur when we go to retreats. And she, um, oh my God, what am I doing to my hair? Um, she drove and we normally go to these things together and it was, we just had a blast. And not only did I meet up with my friends who I have known for quite some time, but two of the VIP Needlebug peeps were there. Stacy and Donna met with met us there and sat at our table with us 
the whole weekend and it was such a joy such a wonderful joy we had a blast it was great meeting them it was great watching their stitching it was just it was just plain fun <laughs> what can i say so i am so glad they they came um we just we just it was just awesome to meet both of you i know you're watching this donna and stacy <laughs> so i will say it is it was just true true pleasure um we did have some excitement though saturday night wow i hope i never it turned out to be a minor thing but i hope i never have to experience that again but two o'clock in the morning the fire alarms go off yeah yeah so being a retired nurse and having participated in many 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 fire drills I didn't even think as soon as I a faint alarm woke me up and I thought oh, wow somebody has their alarm clock really loud but then as it but then I was like semi awake and I heard it trap like it traveled up the hall and it gradually got louder and louder and louder and I realized it was a fire alarm. I jumped out of the bed. Barb jumped out of the bed. I threw a pair of shoes on, didn't even tie them because they were tie shoes. Grabbed my sweater so I had something to at least cover me a little bit in my pajamas and out the door grabbed my wallet because and my phone because i had a digital key to the room and out the door we went and got stacy across the hall from us and would you believe i went the whole weekend and didn't realize she was rooming right across the hall <laughs> what a dope <laughs> but anyway down to the end of the hall down the stairs and to the parking lot and we had a parking lot party for about an hour yeah, all the people in the hotel were out here. What we heard, and this is only rumor, I don't know for sure what it was, but what we heard is there were some people on the floor above us who were apparently indulging in some marijuana and they set something on fire in their room and i have to wonder if it was not intentional because they just left set the fire and left now it could have been far more serious than it was. We ended up out of our rooms for about an hour and uh, they brought fans in and cleared the smoke and what have you. Now, if they tried to set a mattress or something on fire, um, they don't go up in a flame right away. They kind of smolder a bit first. So it could be that that's what, I, I don't know. I'm just surmising. So, but at any rate, we, um, we had some excitement <laughs> for an hour. But of course, being woken up in the middle of the night and not taking the opportunity to visit the little girl's room before you go out <laughs> into the parking lot. Oh my. So, 
finally, I mean, things were settling down and whatever, and the fire chief was right inside the hotel door as well as the police. And finally, I poked my head in and I said, Man, I please, please, please use the bathroom. I promise I'll come right back out. I'll come right back out. Just please, because it was right there, not far from the entrance to the hotel. Thank God. Or we would have had puddles in the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah. Mm, mm. So that was our excitement on top of all the fun we had. <laughs> and that was Sunday before, or that was Saturday. And um, we could stitch for like half a day on Sunday before everybody had to leave. But poor Donna, who came from Rhode Island, had to get her Uber to take her to the bus station before seven o'clock in the morning. So here she was only getting back to bed somewhere after three o'clock and then had to get up again to get herself the Uber and get to the bus so that she could get to Philadelphia to the train so she could take the train from Philadelphia to Rhode Island and I, yeah, 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 yeah. She was quite the traveler, quite the traveler. But I hope and I think she enjoyed all of her time here in Pennsylvania with, with us. And the other exciting news from the retreat, and again, Karen forgot to put the picture. So I will insert a picture and a video of the last stitches that my barb i always call her my barb since we're with two barbs that my barb finished finished her heaven and earth design bath time it is now all finished it took her seven years we start i started stitchers retreat and she started bath time all at the same time I took a year off to do the Christmas stockings for my grandchildren. Barb took two years off to learn how to crochet. So she finally finished her bath time at the retreat. So stitching wise, it took her about five years. It is fabulous. It is beautiful it is everything that you could imagine so i will edit this video right in here here <laughs> i will put a picture of her holding up her finish and a video of her last stitches when now okay this will be oh, the geez. finish of bath time which has been on the hoop for seven years. We are down to the last, how many? Nine. Eleven. Eleven stitches. <laughs> Let's do a countdown. <laughs> Oh. Looks like four left after I cross these. This is four. Three. Oh, maybe I missed counting. I'm still crossing, going back. Oh, okay. Now I have four. Okay, four. I 
And by poking the fabric, we'll say now I have three. Three. Because I was sitting by myself. I do have mine. Two. Two. Oh, we're almost done. <laughs> Oh, sorry, wait. <laughs> oh, the needle came out. Oh, no. She unthreaded the needle. <laughs> sorry, you're seeing her hand. <laughs> Not for long. Now. Now. She's getting ready to put the last stitch in her hand. And here we go. Here we go. Last one. Last cross. Up. Down. In a hate that was um, up for seven years. And one completed. We Yay! are. <laughs> Someone rung the bell for her, which. Okay, she really wanted to ring it herself, <laughs> but someone rung the bell and she was just the uh, main focus of the retreat at that point in time. Everybody wanted to see it. And isn't that wonderful? And she was so thrilled and so happy. And we were all so happy for her. I had the pleasure and the honor of watching her stitch that from the very beginning to the very end. And I am so happy that I was there to watch her put her last stitches in and celebrate that finish with her. I mean, Barb and I have been friends for a long time and to celebrate that together was just out of this world fantastic. And I am so so happy for her that that she now has that finish now she has to get it framed <laughs> and i think she will probably be coming to visit me one day and we will wash it together to get all the um the grid lines out because most of it it really wouldn't matter because it's dark colors but there's an air area of really light colors that, well, you all know how the grid lines in light areas tend to show through, so you need to get them out. Um, and it's a washing and a soaking process, and we'll get it together. And then uh, she will take it to our friend at a uh, framing shop in Virginia and get it framed. So can't wait to see that too it's so it's, it's so exciting and i am so so excited for her wow i think that's all i have for an update today i will be recording today after i get this finished and uploaded of finishing my hardanger sampler and that will probably go up either later today or tomorrow. Um, I'm in the process of designing a piece of hard anger that um, I want to do various filling stitches on. So I can show you A little bit of what at least what the um, what the outline of it is going to look like Let's see if I can get it to a size that there we go I hope you can see this um, maybe if I turn this off won't be so much glare. 
There we go. That will be the basic shape. At this point, I know I, I can't make it. I don't want that. Oh, this is so touchy. I wonder if, if I put it on. Let's try this. There, maybe you can see it a bit. There, you can see it a bit better. Okay, that light is my ceiling light. <laughs> so, oh, I lost it. That's the the basic shape and all of those boxes. My plan is to fill in with different filling stitches. Some might be like a ribbon. Some of the boxes I might divide and make different stitches in there. So it's it's still a work in progress. Um, I will probably after I finish um, after I finish the sampler, I will probably start stitching the outlining and I will stitch that first before I put it out there for anybody else. Um, it is something that will be free for the ASCII when it's when I'm ready to do that. And it is something I will use to teach different stitches. Okay. So I haven't quite worked out details of how that's going to work yet. So I am thinking on that. Um, because of the time involved, I may just do it as a private online class with a nominal fee to go along with it. The chart would be free, but there would be a fee to get into the class is kind of what I'm thinking. That is not engraved in stone as of yet. It's still open. I'm just looking at different scenarios of how, how to do that. Um, because it does take a lot of time, A, to come up with a design, B, to chart all of that, C, to stitch it so that we can see, I can see how it looks and do I need to make changes? And then D, teaching you the different stitches. So there may be a nominal fee involved in that and it may very well end up being a private sessions. Okay. This is all in the thinking process. Like I said, this is just where I'm going with it. Thinking at this point, will it be that? I'm not sure. I still have not made those decisions one step at a time. And my one step right now is to work on getting it charted. Okay. So I really think that is about all I have for you today. And we're almost at an hour and we didn't even stitch. <laughs> but you're all caught up with everything that's been going on. There will be a hard hanger video. I'm going, oh, 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 hold the phone. You're welcome, Donna. <laughs> hold the phone. I forgot. I almost forgot. I had the pleasure, the distinct pleasure of meeting Sarah of Sister Lou Stitches. And again, Karen forgot to put the picture in that she was going to put in. So 
Sister Lou stitches. Oh, let's see. Maybe it in a picture that I have that I took that I forgot to put in here of her business card. Sarah is Sister Lou stitches. You can find her on Facebook at Forrest and Jenny. You can find her on Instagram as Sister Lou Stitches. And she has a website of which I will also put in the drop down box. Okay. Now, she does not sell her designs retail except at retreats like this that she goes to. Other than that, um, she does not sell retail. The other exception is, okay, back up a second. Her designs can be gotten through Hoffman Distributing. So if you go to your local needle workshop, they can order it from Hoffman for you. If it's an older design that Hoffman no longer carries, she will sell those to you off of her website. Okay. So go to your shop, Hoffman's. Um, I believe there may be some places like one, two, three stitch, or I'm not sure. Cause I honestly haven't looked yet that may already be carrying her designs and they are so, so cute. <laughs> I got one and I would show you that one, but I already gave it to my daughter and it's about missing socks and <laughs> it's too cute. I can't remember exactly how this saying goes, but Sarah, she's so sweet. She is such a sweet gal. In fact, she does not live that far from me which is super fantastic. Um, but she was so very, very kind to give me two charts to give away. So the first one is called Tiny Patriot. It's Give Me Liberty or Gimme. <laughs> How cute is that? Two darn cute so if you're interested in li in tiny liberty or tiny patriot put the word liberty in the drop down pardon me in the drop down box and i will use the random comment thing <laughs> and pick a winner uh let's see how about what's the date today today is june 14th how about seven is 21. How about June 28th? That gives you two weeks, two weeks. I will pick a winner for the tiny Patriot and the key, the word would be Liberty. Now the same rules apply as apply for everybody else. You must be over 18 in order to give me your address. I would prefer that you be a subscriber. <clears throat> I need a drink. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> I will send it anywhere. So those of you across the pond, you can certainly enter. I will send it anywhere. Okay. But usual rules, what everybody else says. And the second one, this one's cute too. It is called 1-800-SPOOKY. And for sale, haunted house, all ghosts included. <laughs> Try and keep it that you don't get a glare. So that is so cute too. 1-800-SPOOKY. There you go. So if you're interested in this, um, 
use the keyword haunted. Okay. So these are Sarah Wilbur is the designer. And the name of her, her design company is Sister Blue Stitches. And is that not the cutest little logo with a cardinal on it? Oh, how cute is that? How cute. And like I said, she is such a sweetheart. Such a sweetheart. I truly, truly enjoyed spending some time and talking with her and um, asked her for her information so that I could give her a shout out on the channel and you know, she's she's just a young gal um she does this on the side um but you know beings that i really am all about supporting this industry and encouraging stitchers and sharing my knowledge of needlework that the first thing I thought of was let's give her a shout out on my channel and get her some more exposure. Uh, like I said, because right now, yes, she is distributing through Hoffman's. So there are probably some shops out there that are going, oh, isn't that cute? I think I'll carry that. Uh, but we all know that word of mouth is the best advertisement. And I said to her, I have a rather large number of subscribers and thank you all so, so much for that. Um, that let me give you a shout out and let's see what we can do or what I can do to help you along with your, with your designing. So, that's why. So, Patriot and Haunted. Okay. I will draw on June 28th for the winners of those. Okay. So, golly, I can't think. Now I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I have told you everything that I have to tell you this time. Um, look forward to some Stitch With Me's. Uh, there'll be some more Hard Anger. And I truly do enjoy sharing what I know with all of you. So if there is something that you're looking for, check back through the channel. Chances are, I may have done a video on it already. If not, let me know. And if it's something that I can help you with, I will certainly be more than happy to make a video to help to help you out. Um, I will also, if you contact me ahead of time, do video calls with people to help them um figure out a problem or you can message me i just helped one of my other subscribers with some hard hangers she had a mistake couldn't find it and we figured it out together and i found one and she found yet another one so you know it's it's uh i'm happy to do that so you just need to to get a hold of me my email will be in the drop down I am on Facebook as Karen Bug, um, Instagram as Needlebug. So feel free, feel free to contact me in any of those ways. Now, as far as my Facebook, I am toying with making one just for Needlebug and keeping one just private. Um, but that brings up another thing that I want to talk about on Facebook. Most of you already know that I have the diagonal stitching group. And really, that's what got me started 
on doing YouTube videos because of well, hackers, scammers, profile stealers, and all the things that go on in social media, I unfortunately had to do several things. There are questions if you want to join the group. If you do not answer the questions, it is an automatic decline. It will not accept your request to join the group. So if there are those of you who have been declined, that's the reason why you didn't answer the questions and you must answer all of them. What was happening, and you must answer all of them appropriately because what was happening is I had scammers answering the questions with yes, yes, yes. And at that point in time, I had it set up that the Facebook assistant would approve. And if they had anything written in there, no matter what it was, they were getting in the group. And then we were getting things that were not needlework related and were scams posted in the group. So that has been changed. Barb, my Barb, or I approve all requests to join the group. You must answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, you will not be admitted into the group. Because some people have slipped through the cracks and it happens, neither one of us are perfect. And, you know, once you... Once you put something in place to try and prevent something from happening and keep your subscribers or your members in the group safe, there's always some that figure out a way around it. And they did. So what they do is they steal people's profiles. They don't hack you. They just steal your profile. And they've gotten in the group. And they posted things that are not to be posted in that group, like selling things. Just the other day, they stole a profile of one of my members that has been a member for a long time. And the, the post was that her daughter was coming home from college, was killed in a car accident, she had bought a MacBook Pro and she wanted to give it away for free to a member of the group that was in need. Well, that was very unlike a post that she would have put on. So I contacted her to find out that her profile had been stolen and it was a scammer using her profile so please folks be wary of what you are clicking on and what you are responding to so because of that now in the group when you post a new post it will have to be approved by either myself or barb i'll tell you what it's <laughs> It's a lot of work, but, but I don't want to see any of you get scammed. And that's exactly what that was going to be. Someone was just going to dangle that new Mac book out in front. Somebody was going to respond and then they were going to somehow turn it around and steal your money. Yeah, yeah. So please don't click on those things. If you think it might be legitimate, check it out. Like in this case, do what I did. I had fortunately spoken with her on Messenger before and could message her that I knew it was going to her and not the fake profile. So yes. 
please check them out first. Unfortunately, the way things are today, you need to be just really careful. Don't click on links. Don't answer those posts like that. I'm doing my best to try and keep them out of the group by shutting things down the way I did. Will I ever be able to open it up again? I don't know. And I don't know if I'm willing to take that risk. So just the heads up. If you are someone that watches my videos and you want to join the Diagonal Stitching Group, I am happy to have you, but please answer the questions. And the other thing is, I don't just willy-nilly accept friends to my Facebook page. If you are someone that is a needle worker and you want to friend me, send me a message first. Tell me who you are and why you would like to be on my friends list. Again, it's because I don't want scammers. I'm trying to protect my own profile because once you click and friend one of those people that are scammers that send you friend requests, they go in and they get the list of all your friends and pass it on. That's how they are stealing profiles. So please, Please be careful. Be very, very careful. If you legitimately want to be my friend, message me first. Tell me who you are and why you want to be my friend. And I know it's just because I'm all that awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. I truly am kidding. But seriously, do, do be careful. So with that, now that I am well, not well past, but we are past an hour here, and I really like to keep them shorter than this, but we had a lot to talk about today. But now I am going to bid you all farewell for now. I have another video to make for the Hardanger group. So we all know what I am going to say. Who's going to beat me to it? One of you will. But you all know that the only rules in cross stitch are the ones you set for yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your week. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.